Okay, we're back here live in uh, Silicon Valley, the heart of big data land here at Strata Conference. This is SiliconANGLE's coverage of O'Reilly Media Strata Conference where all the innovation in big data, uh, analytics, applications, infrastructure is happening here. This is theCUBE, our flagship uh, live program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, I'm with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org and there's an old saying that big data gives the cloud something to do. And we're going to you know, come into our, our cloud and big data segment here. We're, we're here with Michael, Manasheri, a uh, CUBE alum, he is heavily involved in Google's developer program and, uh, and basically going out, courting developers and, and helping them really exploit the Google infrastructure, the greatness that is Google. Michael, welcome back to yeah, the CUBE. Yeah, thanks for to see you guys again. Yeah, good to see you. Mm -hmm. So programming, obviously, is something that's really not talked about here because it's kind of a big data analytics. A lot of business, show, a lot of big money players like you know, Intel, EMC making some power moves, distribution mm -hmm. issues and going on. Mm -hmm. But it is an open source community. We're talking about code now. Yeah. And, and uh, Google knows a little bit about code and data and big data because <laughs> since the Google, Google toolbar, we've been collecting <laughs> big data and they have Gmail and a variety of online services. Uh, you guys are in the big data business as a core competency. Yeah, I mean, if people forget, like the, the BI tools were all about things you install and use and you know, I'm here to meet startups, meet developers who are doing new things, integrating with some of these systems, you know, filling the gaps between all these different technologies. And that's why I'm here so, today. So we, we coined a term yesterday called data as code, which is a riff mm -hmm. on infrastructure as a code, which is mm -hmm. you know, essentially kind of your philosophy, also Facebook has the same philosophy mm -hmm. of DevOps and that's world and that's all about automation, yep. cloud, cloud operations. But data as code takes on a whole nother life. For example, we talked to some mm -hmm. Python developers who mm -hmm. are really a hardcore data scientists yeah. programming. So that's, that's a big big market going on. Like the whole Python analytics thing, I think that's huge and it's going to grow and grow, making, making this stuff accessible to people. So talk about your view on this because this is something that we want to expand more yeah. editorially on is that you know, data was a set of data you would bring into an application. Uh -huh. The application would, would interrogate the data and use that data but data as code takes on a whole nother reasoning, meta reasoning yeah. like layer where the developers need to use code, code sets, and build on that. Yeah, I'm a big fan of data as a living, breathing thing. You know, like looking at data while it's streaming, looking at data itself as an object and you know, gaining insights from that. I think a lot of the stuff going on here, and Google does this too with things like the way we use protocol buffers to move data back and forth and really understand what, what's going on with data in motion. I think that's, that's a real key. What's going on in that area right now? What are some of the advances that you're seeing that you can yeah. share with the developers I mean, out seen, there? You've seen like a lot of interesting things like Twitter Storm, which is a way to look at data as it's moving through the, through a pipeline, rather than BI tools, which is data warehouse. You know, warehouse it and then look at it later. You know, warehouse it and we'll figure out what to do with that data. Yeah, later. Shove it in the closet yeah. and then we'll like, go pull it out when we need. Exactly. It. Like people yeah. are realizing that data is a is a living thing, right? You can get gain access to it while it's streaming, and that, there's some value there. Also, like aggregate analysis of all the data you've collected, that's important as well. I think people are coming to grips with that in this world. I mean, people at the big data world know all about this. Like Google's done it. Facebook's done it, Twitter's done it, and Amazon as well. But here we're seeing people like just you know small development teams realizing the power of this kind of technology, and it's a lot of it's open source, and they can use it. It's accessible. Um, you know, prices are coming down. So I think this is going to be the way, a big sea change in the way we look at data for business, from that BI warehouse to the living, breathing data. So thing. so so analyze the data, make decisions, let the machine yeah. help you make decisions prior to persisting. It. Exactly, uh, exactly. And, and then, it's not and just warehousing. It's not like yeah. sticking it in a box. It's like let's open it up and see what it's doing, like data in motion, and you know, seeing what the historic insights are as well. well like you said, Google's been doing that for a long time, as yep. have some of the other you know, web giants. Mm -hmm. What are developers sort of asking you for? What, mm -hmm. what, what's, the, what's the big request that they're making? Yeah. And how are you responding to that? One is accessibility. Like one is a way for them to interact with these tools in a, in a way where they don't have to do a lot of infrastructure work. That's the biggest thing. I think that's, I, so I work on the Google BigQuery team. It's a, it's a hosted analytics database, basically, right? So people want to be able to access that without building their own infrastructure, plugging in their own machines, doing a lot of work to to uh, you know, write code to plug the gaps. They just want a way to get the data in from one data store to another, and we're working on that now at Google. Okay, and then obviously providing that as, as a cloud-based service, Exactly, right? all cloud-based um, APIs to interact with all this stuff, and every, everything's going in that direction. Amazon's doing a lot of this as well. You see this, this is kind of a trend, I think like you see Cloudera and some of these big cloud players doing the same thing. Well, I mean, Amazon clearly is uh, attacking the enterprise and being mm -hmm. very aggressive. You saw yeah. the reInvent conference and they were throwing down the gun, basically essentially calling the traditional enterprise guys margin pigs. Right. You guys <laughs> haven't used that in your marketing. Yeah, we but, don't say those but like Amazon that, but yeah. Amazon was very <laughs> aggressive, right? And, and so, 
Uh, and, and putting things out there that, uh, that were, you know, put, actually put a lot of pressure on yeah. CIOs. I think it's the right move for them. I think that's a great, you know, great idea, right? Like bring that stuff into the cloud, there's a lot of advantages to the cloud. I was just in the F1 talk, so the Google F1 talk was packed, they talked about Spanner, our new database that oh, we yeah, use inside right. of Google, cool stuff. And one thing we do at Google is we use atomic clocks to sync the, the commit mess, you know, commits. Algorithmically yeah. solve for the speed of light. I mean, it's <laughs> like, a cloud used to just be VMs in, in the cloud, right? You could do yeah. the same thing internally, now it's, it's moving farther away. Like, are you going to put an atomic clock in your internal data center if you've got one guy <laughs> running the show? No. Well, Dave and I were talking <laughs> yesterday, I mean, in the world when the bottom up meets the top down, so all the action happens in the middle, and, mm -hmm. and we're moving quickly to that line, but uh -huh. the question that we were, um, the session we were having was that we talked to all of our CIO friends, and, and we asked them directly, and also we, 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 we surveyed them, and mm -hmm. We asked them, if you can give up your data center, would you do it? In a heartbeat, almost 100% yes. Everybody. Because they're in meetings, yeah. their budget of time is spent. If it's not power and cooling, the facilities cost, it's, it's mm -hmm. some other operational baggage. Yeah. And they want to build apps. Yeah, and they want to right. onboard developers. So what do you see in that? How do you, yeah, now, so you agree that with that? That trend is completely right. Like, I look at, you can look at it with mail, right? Like it's the same product. That may, people had their own send mail servers, and then blah, blah, blah. And they, you know, now they just want to use Gmail or something like that, right? Like that's a trend, and everybody wants to move in that direction. They want to build apps. Look at the mobile developers who are three-person shops. They're building a game. They don't have time to build a data center. They don't want exchange. They just, <laughs> I'll so, say it. I didn't say that. I'll say it. No, <laughs> no, no, that's the truth. Sorry, Microsoft, you know, you got to get with the program. But um, no, but there are some issues. So like, you know, what, you know. <laughs> You've seen the Microsoft ads. The new Microsoft ads, have you seen them? <laughs> uh, going after Gmail. That's right. Because <laughs> Gmail's good, good luck with yeah, that. Yeah, I dress like Serving that. Serving ads. <laughs> no, 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 Outlook on the cloud is actually getting some traction. We'll, we'll see how yeah, that goes. Yeah, but, so no, but in all seriousness, no, there is some security risks. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, web services is now prime time. I mean, go back a decade when web services was hitting the, hitting the scene, you know, it, it was post dot com bubble and it just never popped. Yeah. And it was some good tech involved. Yep. But now, you know, fast forward 10 more years, web services is the rage because you can use web services and some of those techniques to right. do validation, authentication, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. So mm -hmm. what, is your, what is your take on that? Because that's a developer angle, yeah. but it's also a network and it's also some other plumbing stuff. Yeah, it's true. Like Educating people on how to use like things like web services, RESTful APIs, that's a, that's a challenge. I mean, a lot of people that come from the desktop world, they don't know how to do that. I, mm -hmm. I've noticed that kind of gap. And you see people who really get that, making a lot of inroads into that system. But I think that that's, this is true. Um, the security angle as well, I think people just need to be educated. I have a hard time believing that you know, security in the cloud, is, especially with these large established players is, is any worse than you know, something you could do with the you know, duct tape together data centers that you have internally. Um, but it's just about education and using those protocols properly. But I think generally people, I would agree with that, the vast majority of, of potential customers out there, you know, the, the companies like Google are going to have much better security. Mm -hmm. the, the difference seems to be, and I wonder what Google's posture is, if we talked about you know, Amazon's attack in the enterprise before, you said that's yep. good for them. Mm -hmm. It seems like you're more comfortable with going after the developer space, yeah. and that's maybe the, the best I mean, use case for today. I think, I personally think there's an inevitability that more and more people will move to the web as a first class, and even mobile, as the first class development platform, and then the web second. And, and you know, this kind of traditional space where people are still building desktop apps, do think, I think that's quickly going away because of all the advantages of, of the web platform. The tooling and, and you know, some of the technologies, we need to catch up, but we'll catch up quickly. Like what, so, give me some examples. Of well, like, I mean, building a web application, the tooling is still pretty primordial, right? Like if you want to do something, like if you wanted to build a, you know, some kind of database front end in the cloud, like yeah, it's, it's, the tooling is not quite there yet, but we're moving quickly. I mean, we have teams of Google working at this, we have lots of people in the open source space working on great tooling, you know. Right. So I think it's, it's coming. How do, you so, get, how do you get by all the noise? And I want to ask you, I want to ask you about how you guys evangelize some of the things that you've done as, as open source code yeah. and you get up all the noise. Mm -hmm. But also I want to, before that, reference what Intel said yesterday mm -hmm. on, because they're obviously they're a big player. Mm -hmm. and, and it's legit, right? It's performance, yeah. gains, security, yeah. uh, and user experience. Yeah. I mean, those are things that Google, that's like in your DNA. So right. talk about those three factors of uh, performance, security, you mentioned cell level yeah, security, mean, and, in the database side and then user experience well, and then you know I don't have the metrics for security but for me I know that Google security is top notch and I know some of the cloud players that are out there they, they care about that first and foremost we have armies of people that care about it's a differentiator security. for you right yeah, I mean this is another yeah. thing you can't do with your own infrastructure if you're small is like have really top notch security unless you have a great security expert I mean Google and Amazon all these people they hire security experts they have armies of people monitoring the cloud system so that's I, one thing okay. well, there, are, there are trust issues on that too I mean there's a lot of True. issues there well but I want to stand security for a second because from a technology standpoint and a process Process into etc. It's 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 it's. I think there's no question that mm -hmm. your security's gonna be better. The issue for a lot of enterprise customers, and again, we're you're going after developers, so this is not as much of an issue. But I want to get your opinion here: is mm -hmm. 
well, I can't go in and audit, it doesn't you know, comply with my, the edicts of my organization, I, they won't redefine what an incident is, and the reporting's mm. not compatible with the way I report, and it's just, it just doesn't work for me. Yeah, so. I mean, I can't speak for other companies, but I know at Google we have this internal project called the Data Liberation Front, <laughs> I don't know if you've got heard about this. <laughs> no. It's actually Google engineers who are, let you export all your data and make sure that every product that's cloud-based has an option for you to get your data out and monitor it. And Google Apps has a great monitoring API, for example. So I don't know about the other, other players, but at Google at least we think a lot about this. So as a, as a customer, could I actually come in and, and physically audit the, the, the data center? Well, it depends on what you're doing, right? right like, okay. you can't come into our data centers, but right. we have you know, APIs that let you log. Look at the App Engine logging apparatus. Like, everything is logged very well. We're building the same kind of tools on the Compute Engine product that's going to you know, be generally available at some point this year, probably. And so these, these kind of things are, are we're building it. Okay, know, so I respect that. You're not going to let people into your buildings. Would, will you meet with me, or do I have to email you? Oh, I mean, it depends on what you're doing, right? Yeah, like, I'm, a, I'm a big customer, right? Will you sit down and meet with me and to talk about you know, security and, and yeah, what definitely. you're doing? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we just uh, released a cloud uh, platform support package, and this is to address some of those concerns. So some of our big players coming in, they can come and talk to somebody. We have sales engineers as well. I mean, we're building this for the long term. Maybe let so. my insurance auditors in, <laughs> have a little discussion. I'm well, serious. These are compliance yeah. issues, yeah. yeah. And I'm, very, I'm very familiar with this because I used to work on the Google Apps product. And yeah, oh, okay. these are important things. And we're, you know, we may, we're going to maintain full compliance with some of these you know, enterprise level security. And I know it's out of the context of the developer community <laughs> They're not pounding you for that stuff, but it's 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 coming, right? Yeah, I mean these are these are real problems and right. real challenges for people. But yeah, we are we are working on it and we're aware of some of these things. How do you talk to the young developers out there, Michael? Because mm -hmm. there's a new generation of entrepreneurs and, and developers mm -hmm. coming into the marketplace um, who don't know that we're on our fourth generation open source, who haven't lived through those yeah. generational <laughs> shifts. And as we had that debate last night, I think we're on the fourth generation open source. We debated what year it actually started, yeah. but we pegged 1985 we, as a nice number. We, we, I just went to a QFS talk here. It's just a, it's a it looks a lot like RAID, and we were just joking that you know, we see the same things over and over. Pre, we, like, we called it the prehistoric yeah. Yeah. open source, <laughs> and then really Unix drove mm -hmm. a lot of that, you know, it was AT&T, yeah. yeah. created that, that yeah. wave, but so this, those young guys are out there looking for navigation around what to do, uh, what projects to get involved mm -hmm. in, and there's a lot of choices. Apache's obviously solid. Yeah. I, you guys have a lot of different approaches. I Dremel's out there. We, we always talk about like the modern, I call them the modern developers, and these are people that are using like Ruby on Rails, and they love scripting languages, and they don't know anything about systems, and I think, great. You know, like, systems is becoming a specialized thing. You know, they just want the cloud to work. They want everything to look like a web stack. And we sort of do that at Google where we, we you know, the infrastructure is a separate layer. Like, you know, there's somebody running all that stuff. And then all the app developers just write their app. And I think that's the way everything is going. I always trust what, whatever Google does now, everyone will be doing it. Yeah, five we, years. We, we, we joke, Dave and I have joked on the cube before that, yeah. that Google's could be the, is the Intel, what they did with the microprocessor by hardening yeah. down all the really complex, mm -hmm. low level yeah, coding. Exactly. I think that developers just go to the microprocessor. So you guys have that same We have that holistic, same mentality. Like, but on the cloud scale, right? So yeah, we, we want the cloud to just be a cloud that you can write an application, deploy it, and it's just out there for everybody. We handle all the details. So I got to ask you about um, something that we're um, calling software-led infrastructure mm. versus software-defined infrastructure. Mm -hmm. All the rage on convergence, the old convergence, network, storage, compute. Yeah, uh, you the guys old sun network is yeah, the computer. Yeah. 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 That, that, that is convergence, <laughs> but you add <laughs> flash. I gotta make again. We had Scott McNeely on a while yeah. back, and he said, I just sort of called the cloud. I would <laughs> still be a business. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, conver <laughs> the converged infrastructure I say is a good name, but it's been modernized. You got Flash, you got Open Compute going on. Mm -hmm. So a whole new dimension of what those elements are now doing, right. and they're calling a software-defined data center. I want to get your take on that. What is the mm -hmm. software-defined data center? <laughs> and one, it's not defined yet, so why we use the term software-led. Well, I'm not sure exactly what your terminology means, but I do I get what the concept is, which is like people want, they want use cases, and they want the development environment to match you know, what, they're, what they're doing, right? So one example is I want to test locally and deploy globally, because it's easier that way. I want to you know, test on my laptop, write an app that fits, and then just deploy it at planetary scale, and that's the kind of stack that I want to be able to run, and I think that's what's happening, right? So people are, look, look at what Heroku's doing, like they've scaled up this sort of Ruby on Rails kind of environment, you know, uh, get to deploy, this kind of stuff. And I think that's smart, because developers want to do that. They want to use their Rails stack on their laptop, develop, push to the cloud and it just runs. And I think that's sort of what you're getting at. Yeah, I that think that's what people want. They want push button global yep. deployment yep. And, and you can use virtualization. No hacking use... for the production yeah. side. And <laughs> I'm, I'm simplifying a little bit when I say Google, we have that internally. I mean, there's a little more complicated than oh, that. Yeah, yeah we mean... basically think that way. We're like, I don't, as a developer, if I'm making like the new Gmail or something, I don't want to think about the deployment yeah. that much. I just want to be oh. able to, you know, make sure it runs and then push. And well, I, talked to, I talked to Sergey in 08, 2008, mm -hmm. when they announced Android and, and or Chrome, if yep. you will. And you know, the big conversation was, I think I was the only one who actually wrote this, but you know, 
turns out it's true today, but it's an operating system right? at the end of the day. And he kind of had that smirk on his face. No, it's not an operating system. <laughs> it's the PR, oh, no, 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 no yeah, operating system. Yeah. <laughs> you know, come on, sir. It's, you know, it's an operating environment. Uh, but that's what you're talking about, right? I mean, yeah, it's just, it's just a place to run the app. Like, I don't know what you want to call it. It's, operating system is a specialized I don't want, thing. Well, that's, that's, and, you know, that brings up kind of let people get all their hair stands up when they yeah. hear about that. But it's really not about competitive issues. It's more of, that's the, it's an operating environment. Yeah, right? You've got run code on things, distributed resources. Right, it's like you want to build something and you want people to use it. I mean, that's all it is. I don't know what to call it anymore, but that's basically the environment. I think environment is a good way to look at it. Well, let's talk about like um, the things, the languages, like obviously Java's got a big following, yep. Python's big. What are some of the languages that you're seeing that you think are well positioned for rapid acceleration in this I mean, new modern infrastructure? Script, I mean, Pyth so you talked about Python earlier for analytics. Like Python is a huge developer community, and you know we use it a lot at Google, and I think that people are coming around the idea that it's a great language developed for some of these things. It's, it's, it's concise, a lot of people are using it for analytics, and it's opening the door to people that are just getting into development. So that's one. Um, I don't, I'm from Google. I don't want to plug Go, but I think Go has made a lot of you know these kind of um, inroads to some of this stuff. So I don't mean to sound like a company man, but Go has become very popular for some of these. How things. about some of the databases out there? So you got Mongo, you got Hadoop, you yep. got different varieties yep. of, of flavors, and you got in memory. You got uh, a hot start of yeah. Aerospike, which is in memory. This brings up another language, which is JavaScript. So a lot of these things have you know you use JSON objects. There's a lot of JavaScript libraries. I mean, JavaScript is still big and it's very accessible right. as well. So you know, say what you will about that language is, you know. They got Node.js. No, 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 no. Node is huge, you know, things like that. WebSockets is huge. So there's a lot of these kind of like JavaScript web-based. So things that come from the web and are filtering out to the rest of the community, I think that's an Talk about WebKit, okay? Because mm -hmm. obviously that is, when that came out, that was really kind of liberating. Yeah. And where do you see that happening now? What are some of the dynamics? How has that evolved and where, uh, talk about where It's interesting to see it? Opera switching over to WebKit as well. Yeah, yeah. What, are you, what are you hearing out there? What's some of the what, feedback you're getting on well, that? So WebKit is great. Like this is a really successful project, right? It was an open source project. It started with the grassroots around like I think the Linux kind of environment, and it just was the best way to do this. And after after time, it just seemed like a really great solution to the kind of you know run so, sort of the 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 browser. What is it called? The rendering engine for a, for a browser. And I think people glommed onto it and said it's open source. We can use it. We can create some standards around it, and it, it just has taken off. And okay. So right given thing. that, so what's happening in mobile on on the developer front? Mm -hmm. What does the front end um, environment look like for developers who want to yeah. say, you know what, I want mobile. Web will get to it's easier or whatever. But well, mobile primary. I mean, you've seen, so you've seen you know, Firefox OS. You have these kind of things where they're like the browsers who, that are the primary interface, you see Ubuntu moving into that space. It's great because it shows how big that market is, right? So, you know, it's, what did Eric Schmidt say? It's going to be 10 times larger than the kind of desktop market that we had, and that's wonderful. A lot of people are going to have mobile as their first computing environment, and I think it's just exciting. I think first, second, and third. Yeah, okay. why not have lots of operating <laughs> systems in there? Okay, we've got a break. Uh, Michael, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, it's always one, good to hang one, out with you guys. One, one parting uh, comment for the end. What is the future for developers over the next 12 to 14 months? What are you going to be seeing as the yeah. hot, hot stuff? Cloud, them. services, and convergence. Okay, you hear here on theCUBE, Google agreeing with data as code, which was our religion, we, uh, we love that. A living organism, data is a key asset, um, and it's going to be a real part of the developer equation as well as the customer. So this is theCUBE at the Strata Conference. We'll be right back with our next guest after the short break.